you said 14 to 3 and if they win that game it's bye bye a lot Ooh. of uh, as we see that uh, playoff uh, picture there's still a lot of teams alive as we are in the second last week of the season and uh, the Lions as we pointed out are losing their game against Cincinnati but they're in that top group of three and the Lions trying to clinch the NFC Central title. We should explain why New Orleans would beat the Bears out because New Orleans would be eight and seven and say they lost next week and the Bears won depending on what happens and they tied at eight and eight or something like that. New Orleans beat Chicago in head to head in an overtime game That's early right. in the season. Yes indeed. The Oak Ridge boys were here today singing the national anthem. They're doing some concerts in the area and they were at the hockey game last night. The champion Islanders beat the Minnesota North Stars. The Oak Ridge boys did the anthem there. They did the anthem here today. They're getting to be professional anthem singers. You know, it was also there a lot of excitement of this town about the hockey team, the USA hockey team. The Olympic team is playing here in Minnesota tonight against the Soviet National B team. Of course, they won the first game up at Lake Placid. A lot of the players were at the Islander North Star game last night, including young Pat LaFontaine. So this is great hockey country, and uh, they've got themselves quite a doubleheader. An important Vikings game this afternoon, and USA Olympic hockey team in action against the Soviets tonight. And a lot of the Bear officials came up early, Jerry Venisi and Mike McCaskey, to take a look at the Vikings indoor facility, because the Bears don't have an indoor facility. And they're looking at the Vikings and the Packers. It's been a very rough go for the Chicago Bears. When the weather gets bad in Chicago, they got to bus an hour to find some kind of an indoor uh, facility. And uh, Mike Ditka and the rest of the team and the officials want to rectify that before next season to give them an even break with the rest of the teams <laughs> in the NFL Central. Yeah, those Vikings practice in their shorts inside that uh, bubble here, even in cold weather. That's pretty comfortable for this time of year. Ricardo's, uh, rather, uh, Ricardo's kickoff taken by Gentry and brought out the loose oh. ball. Maybe but Minnesota football. Let's see. No, it is going to be Chicago ball at the 27 yard line. Dennis Gentry lost the ball, but the Bears recovered. So Chicago starts first down from their own 27 yard line, and they have a 16 to 6 lead. Let's go back and take a look at that kickoff play. Okay. There's Dennis Gentry, number 29, as he cuts back here, fumbles the ball. Well, he hit the turf first. He hit the turf first before he fumbled. Yeah, and I think the Bear wound up with the loose ball anyway. So first down as we begin the second half, 16 to 6. Both these teams needing to win today and next week. For any playoff opportunity, Walter Payton barreling straight ahead, picks up about seven yards on that carry. Dennis Johnson, the linebacker, number 52, and Safety Joey Browner, who's in there, number 47. Well, Peyton's not deck. very big. Five foot ten, 205 pounds, and he has to take this tough yardage, too. Puts his head down, and it was tough yardage, but he always gets up. Amazing football player. Two new receivers in for the Bears, Saldi and Marjoram have come in. Give it to Peyton. Cutting back into the middle. He has stopped well short of the first down. Got maybe a yard. McNeil was there, number 54. Elshire, and at the bottom of that stack, Dennis Johnson, number 52. So it is a gain of maybe a half yard at best for Walter Payton. And now they bring in Dunsmore and Moorhead. So they have all three of their tight ends on, in on the third and short. It's going to be third and uh, a little more than two yards. And uh, with Mike Ditka calling the plays, which he is doing today, you don't have to be assured that it's going to be a run. You could do anything. Four down linemen in. Duck White running the front three for the Vikings. And they pitch it to Peyton trying to get wide. He slipped trying to cut it back upfield and did not get to the line of scrimmage. And the Vikings. We're there to make sure that he could not scramble any farther. A stack of purple shirts, so it'll be fourth down. Ray Stackowitz will come in to punt, and of course, uh, he's the new Bear punter replacing Bob Parsons, a somewhat controversial move by Mike Ditka last week. Yes, he was uh, cut for making contact with the Chicago Blitz uh, as far as a coaching job is concerned, and Ditka says it was disloyal and said, uh, you're going to be cut. Uh-oh. Stackowitz, the punt is blocked. It's a loose ball bouncing into the end zone, recovered by the Vikings. It is Steve Jordan, number 83. Is it a touchdown? Evidently not. The first down at the one. Well, 
Well, Bob Parsons may be glad he wasn't out on the field for that play. <laughs> Randy well, Holloway came barreling in, and these Vikings seem to have a knack for blocking kicks. One, two. It looked like he took the proper amount of steps. There was just a whole bunch of Minnesota Vikings got through, and there it was on the ground, and it was... Steve Jordan. Steve Jordan who got the ball. You talk about a turnaround and a big break for the Vikings. They're right down at the one-yard line. He was down at the one, even though he rolled into the end zone. They ruled him down on the loose ball. And that is Ted Brown, and he has a touchdown. So the Vikings strike quickly to begin the second half. A block punt. And a touchdown run by Ted Brown off his one-game suspension. A sore shoulder well enough to barrel into the end zone of the Bears and an unhappy Mike Ditka. That's one thing the Vikings have done over the years time and time again. It's won so many football games for them is to block punts or block extra point or block field goals. And I didn't check his depth there, but it looked like he didn't take too much time in, in getting the ball off. The Vikings just penetrated. Ricardo has the point after and we've got ourselves a close football game with that missed point after now uh, staring the Bears right in the face it is a three point margin Chicago in front well we've got fun and excitement at the Metrodome as the Vikings strike quickly on the block punt the Brown touchdown and a three point lead for the Bears who have the football Dennis Gentry over the 30 to the 31 yard line returning Ricardo's kickoff and the Bears with pretty good field position from there. Ricardo's kickoffs have kickoffs have been short today. So Ray Stakowitz replacing Bob Parsons runs into a problem in his first game as a Bear as the blocking broke down on the right side of the Bears punting unit. And Randy Holloway came in to block it. By the way, the Missed point after by Thomas was indeed a miss. We thought perhaps a Viking had gotten a hand on it, but that was not the case. And now the Vikings crowd coming alive here, getting into the cheerleading of their home team to try and get that ball back again. Walter Payton and the Vikings defense, led by Dennis Johnson, rises up to stop him after a gain of only a yard. Well, the fans are going crazy here. Their little routine where they go up and down all the way around the stands. And they all stand up, sit down, fight, fight, fight. The Vikings defense has, in the last five games, have allowed 90 points. That's a tremendous improvement. That's not too many points, about 17 and a half per game. Second down, long eight, eight to nine for the. Bears from their own 32. They give it to Suey. Suey crashes forward for a gain of about three, maybe four yards on the play. It'll bring up third and five. The crowd just been a little bit ahead of our cameraman trying to catch up with them here. <laughs> well, the fans go up and down so quickly it's hard to keep up with them, but they are going wild. They're on the near side now. They go up by the sections here and it just kind of spills around the metro guard. 60,000 plus in attendance. Third and five. Shotgun formation. They're revved up and so is the Vikings defense. Trying to get the ball right back here. And McMahon having trouble having the signals heard. <laughs> Going deep. Intended in the general direction of McKinnon on the sideline. And there's a penalty flag down. Back at the line of scrimmage, there was a flag down. That pass uh, was overthrown. Everybody, McKinnon and Marjoram, were in the general direction. And the flag is apparently going to be against Chicago. And I would think that one will be declined by the Vikings. That's a good guess, Tim. To bring up a fourth down. Jay Hilgenberg was called for the infraction as the crowd goes wild once again. There they are. All right, guys. I knew we'd eventually catch up with those folks. <laughs> That's the trick. They just go around by section. Each section following the other, standing up and 
shaking their fists here to bring the rafters down if there were any. Stackowitz hits it from his 26 yard line. Fair catch signaled and taken by Leo Lewis at the 27 yard line of the Minnesota Vikings. And so they are now down by only three and they have the football. Good defensive work by that Minnesota defense, which has been a pretty steady part of this Vikings team, which has struggled offensively with all of the injuries. We'll be right back. First down, Minnesota from their own 27 yard line with 10.42 remaining third quarter, a 16 13 Chicago lead. Remember, each team must win its two remaining games for any shot at all in a playoff spot. Minnesota with a better opportunity than the Bears. Straight ahead, Teddy Brown. Picks up about seven, maybe eight on the play to the 35-yard line. Otis Wilson on the tackle, number 55, along with Hartenstein and McMichael. New Orleans leading Philadelphia 14-3 in the fourth period. That is bad news for Vikes and Bears fans. Buffalo with some good news in front of San Francisco, 10-6 in the third quarter. And likewise here, Cincinnati leading Detroit, 14-6 in the third quarter. Vikings need to win two, and Detroit needs to lose two. Part of that Vikings equation. Galbraith gets to the 40-yard line and another Vikings first down. Hartenstein and Fensick on the tackle for Chicago. Seattle leading the Giants 17-6. What a dizzy year it has been for the Big Apple team. Houston hurting Cleveland 24-13. Well, that will put the Steelers in if, uh, if uh, Houston hangs on to win that game. I think with their win yesterday, the Pittsburgh is in, but Cleveland... In the playoffs, but they haven't since the division. Right, that's right. First down. Dills. He's got a man open. Oh. Brewer dropped the ball. He was backing up and could not hold on to the pass. Todd Bell gave him a little jolt. And Brewer uh, had himself a fine first half at tight end for the Vikings. Darren Nelson coming into the ball game now. Second and 10 Vikings from their own 40 yard line. 921 to go in the third period. Vikings led 6-0 early. Matt Suey passed 74 yards to Walter Payton to send the Bears in front. And the Vikes have since cut a 16-6 margin to 16-13. There's Brewer. Pickup of about eight. Todd Bell, Mike Singletary. Tackling the tight end. They'll call it a seven yard gain and it'll be third down and no it's going to be just about two to go third and two to go for the Vikings. I thought Bud Grant came up with an interesting comment uh, yesterday when we were talking with him. He, he said with all these injuries he said I hate to see those injuries but it does make my coaching job a lot more interesting trying to, to uh, make up for these things and trying to create new ways to win ball games. This uh, certainly involves a lot more coaching when you have the problems that they've had with personnel injuries. The blitz is on, and Dills could not get the ball to Nelson on the sideline as Jim Osborne decked him, and the Bears brought a bunch of people, including a safety man, that put the pressure on Dills. So that was a big third down play for Chicago defensively. Yes, Gary Fensick got up right up in the middle, and you'll see Osborne. You see 45 is Fensick who's picked up, but it creates a gap there for Osborne, and Dills had no chance. The blitz, the Bears aren't blitzing as much, but they are pulling them off on third down and surprising the Vikings two or three times so far today. Ray Coleman's third punt of the afternoon upcoming. He's had his own 32-yard line. The Vikings change their blocking against the Bears lineup. Coleman trying for that corner. Goes out of bounds. It just went sharply left on Coleman as it came inside the 20. So it'll wind up at the 18 yard line of Chicago. And that's where the Bears will begin. Now protecting a three point margin with 8.28 remaining in the third quarter. Mm -hmm. 
So the Bears bring it out from their own 19 yard line following Coleman's punt. And Suey and Peyton continue at the running back spots. Third lead by three. Moorhead in motion. And with time deep for Gualt. And that's overthrown again. And back on the coverage, number 29 was John Swain. Well, there was no way that Willie Galt was going to get behind Mr. Swain. He, he was down the field 45 yards. Well, Swain came in for the rookie, Carl Lee, who picked up an interference call earlier in the football game and a, a play covering Willie Galt. So they're giving John Swain a try, the third-year man from Miami, their number four choice in 1981. They've had some problems on the corner with injuries to both Swain and Rufus Betts. And that kind of opened the door for a start for young Carl Lee. Man is three of ten for 14 yards passing, but his team is in front. Screen to Peyton. Vikings, excellent job breaking up the blocking. They never gave it a chance to develop. Matt Blair bulldogging Peyton out of bounds, and Scott Studwell breaking up the blocking. Peyton wound up with a gain of maybe two yards. If that, now they're going to give him only one yard. So it is third down. Now the way the Vikings are playing the defense, if they're going to throw to Willie Galt, the best area is about the 15 to 20 yard turn in or turn out because they're playing him so loose down the field. Well, that has been a mystery to me all season long. Why they don't try to get the ball to him in medium range and let him run with it after he catches it. Now they have double coverage on him. They've jammed him up front. Four man line. For the Vikings, the ball is dropped by Walter Payton. You won't see that too often. However, he had to go down for the football with Matt Blair right on him. It's not likely he was going to go anywhere near the first down marker. So the Vikings defense rises up again. Two good series in a row for them. And the Bears will have to punt. An injury report on Ted Brown that he has a pinched nerve in his neck. He may not get back in. He's coming off a shoulder injury. And has played very effectively today. Stack of a tied punt hangs up and now takes a Chicago bounce and will go out of bounds at the 42 yard line of Minnesota. Still, good field position given the Vikings offense by their defense, but a flag is down on the play back at the line of scrimmage. That usually means somebody was downfield prematurely. Now will come an interesting decision because it is against Chicago. The Vikings already have the ball at the 42 yard line. No possibility of a fumble. They may decline it, which they I think they have. Yeah, that's not bad field position there. And they are taking the ball downfield. Illegal motion on the kicking team. Penalty is declined. It's first down. So the Vikings start from their 42 yard line with 803 remaining in the third quarter and it is a three point ball game with the Bears on top and Minnesota in good position here. Brown has the uh, pads off and uh, the pinch nerve in his neck has obviously shortened uh, the day for him. He's not dressed to come back in. We're in the third period. Leo Lewis in motion behind the ball. Vikings first down. They give to Darren Nelson. Nelson with a burst of speed gets up for a gain of about six yards before Singletary nailed him. Dave Dewerson with uh, Huff doing a job on the left side for the uh, Minnesota Vikings. Number 51, the left guard, Utah State. Dave Dewerson is now playing the strong safety spot in place of uh, Todd Bell. Galbraith in motion. Gills getting time and the pass incomplete. A flag down on the play. It was intended for Ricky Young out of the backfield. And they may be calling interference on the Bears. There are two keys to that. Did he hit him after the ball was in the air, which it didn't appear that he did, or did he hit him too far down the field? At any rate, it's going to be against Chicago, and it's going to be against Mike Singletary. 
referee Tom Dooley consulting with his officials. Bringing it back to the original line of scrimmage and let's see what they do with it from here. It's being marched off against the Bears a five yard penalty be close to a first down. In fact that'll give it to him. Illegal contact There's number 50 defense first down. Illegal contact one uh, would guess that maybe he had uh, made a little bit of a chuck too far downfield. Eh, Johnny? Yeah. Also it looked like maybe uh, the contact did uh, happen after uh, the ball was in the air too. So they got him on both counts. <laughs> Well, it's a five yard penalty but it's a first down for the Vikings and they're in Bears territory at the 47 yard line. Darren Nelson and he is grabbed by Otis Wilson just as he got to the line of scrimmage and what appeared to him to be a place to go was shut down. Right now let's get an update on the San Francisco game from Brent Musburger. Tim, the 49ers have taken charge in the second half of this game. Now, this is the touchdown that gave them the lead, Montana to Craig, and the 49ers are threatening again. They are down to the Bills' two-yard line. Back to Tim and Johnny. Well, they don't want to see that in uh, Chicago, in San Francisco, in front of Buffalo. Second and 10. Galbraith in motion. Hills rolling this way, and Richard Kent is there to greet him. Right behind him, Mike Hartenstein, the sack for the rookie Richard Dent, number 95, all the way back to the 42 of Minnesota. Give some credit to Hartenstein, too, because Dill spotted him first and forced him to back to run back this other way. And here came uh, Richard Dent, number 95, to make the sack along with Hartenstein. You almost have to give it to both of them, give them a half a sack each. That's the second of the day for Dent. The rookie starting for Dan Hampton. His knee injury just too much. Hampton's in uniform today, but uh, he will not be used unless it's absolutely necessary. Third and very long for the Vikings. The pitch out to Nelson, and he's tripped up right at the line of scrimmage by Kevin Potter, number 20. The most recent acquisition of the Bears' defensive secondary. Free agent picked up from Houston. So it is fourth down for the Vikings and the Bears. Make a big defensive stop as the Vikings had been pressuring the Bears offense. Two good stoppages by their defense, getting them the ball, and uh, they trail by only three, so the Chicago defense rises to the occasion. There's Dennis McKinnon waiting for the punt at the 15 of the Chicago Bears. Ray Coleman will hit it from his 31. That one goes out of bounds. Up at the 26 yard line. So Chicago will try to move it offensively here. Neither team has been able to move the ball effectively in this third period. We're down to 518 remaining. Chicago holding a 16 to 13 lead. Tim Ryan with Johnny Morris. We are at the Metrodome in Minneapolis, Minnesota, where the Chicago Bears have the football and the lead starting from their own 27 yard line. The pitch out to Walter Payton. Payton has a good hole on the block from Covert. He had a first down, it would appear, all the way out near the 40 yard line. Joey Browner made the tackle. And you can see, as you mentioned, Jimbo Covert had to pull out number 74, the left tackle. It does the job on Teal, allowing Payton to cut up the field and get some yardage. Those big old tackles pulling out there like guards and running backs. But amazing to see a big guy like that rookie from Pittsburgh who goes close to 275 and he can motor. And yet I think he feels his, his strength, his best strength is, is a pass blocking, big strong guy in there. Although at Pittsburgh, of course, he got to play to run a lot. Moorhead. It's about three over the 40 to the 42 yard line. Elshire on the tackle. We look at uh, Mike Ditka checking the playbook there. And sending in McKinnon the next play and Matt Suey comes in as well. Well one thing Mike Ditka has done is at least you never know what's going to be called. He's, he's he given some offense on the last to the, one, I think. <laughs> he's given some offense to the some imagination to the offense and something the Bears haven't had here for a long time. You never know what they're going to come up with and at least it's more exciting football. I don't think you'd like to call on first down whether it was his or was changed whatever. Second and eight. And has a man open that's Peyton and Peyton trying to get to the first down marker Joey Browner forced him out. 
it'll be yes a Chicago first down right at midfield one thing that coach Ditka said that he was going to give Jim McMahon a lot more latitude in calling audibles so he could have been reacting to an audible yeah. call that McMahon called and and that maybe Ditka did not want it changed and that's the risk you do you have when you give a quarterback the latitude to uh, check off whenever he wants to Joey Browner has uh, been getting a fair amount of playing time in John Turner's spot since uh, about the middle of the second period. We don't know if Turner is hurt, hurt at all. McMahon complete to Peyton again the same pattern and he's driven out this time by the linebacker McNeil number 54 after a gain of six maybe six and a half yards. Peyton has rushed for 89. I'm sorry rushed for 51 yards on 12 carries and not including that last one had 89 yards and pass receiving today and they're going to mark it a six yard gain second and four Walter Payton and of active players is now the 11th ranking active player in pass receptions in the National Football League he had 320 receptions going into this game one running back on second and four and they give it to the tight end Moorhead Moorhead breaks off one tackle and has himself a first down well, he spun and turned like the running back he once was. Good effort by Moorhead inside the 40 of Minnesota. Uh, he earned that. With all the action with Peyton going one way and you bring the tight end in there with all that traffic and you hand off going back the other way, he follows uh, his uh, interference and then gets really smacked there. Spins out of it and manages to get the first down. Emory Moorhead, former wide receiver, former running back, former everything in the NFL before he finally found a home. Vikings now sent in two defensive players just before the snap of the ball, and they are down linemen on first down. So Hallway, the defensive coach of the Vikings, doing a little bit of juggling on his own here. He's the Bears, and a quick pass out to Willie Galt will be a gain of only about two as uh, the Vikings forced McMahon to hurry that. So now the chess game between Holloway and Buddy Ryan defensively starting to develop. This pass may have been possibly tipped there. You see Doug Martin, 79, just kind of ticked it just a little bit, so Gull had to come back and make the grab for the two-yard game, but he caught the football. Second and eight. Turner and Bessett come in in the secondary. Four down linemen again for the Vikings. Matt Suey. And Suey will be stopped short of the first down. Mullaney and Blair in on the hit. And John Swain, the quarterback, number 29. Third down and about three. In come McKinnon and Moorhead, no doubt delivering the play. And of course, don't forget, most of you looking in at our telecast will be seeing Washington and Dallas. Two 12 and two teams. A Dallas victory can clinch the home field advantage in the playoffs. And unfortunately, uh, some of you, including those in the Minnesota area here, will not get to see that doubleheader game today on CBS. Suey takes it upfield, and he has the first down to the 25 yard line, tripped up by Tommy Hannon, number 45. The Bears' run offense continues to be effective, and they have stayed with it primarily today some criticism in last week's game against Green Bay that they had gone away from it but uh, it has worked and they've stayed with it look at Suey 10 carries for 76 yards at 7.6 a carry that's not not bad he's pushing 600 yards now and that's uh, by far his finest season Peyton over 50 yards rushing this afternoon so the combination of the two going well for Chicago and they are using up clock time we're down to 122 remaining third quarter Suey trying to find an opening, cuts it back beautifully and gets inside close to the 10. And another Bears first down. Hannon pulled him down there, and Suey apparently hurt a little bit on the play, and he got a nice block from his running mate, Walter Payton. As it was Payton out in front, and as the linebacker gave a little bit, he gave some ground here, and uh, Suey waited for him to give the ground. You can see McNeil as Payton just pushes him out, and then Suey just turned up the field. That's a nice, quick move by a fullback, isn't it? A very quick move as he pushed off his left foot and turned up the field. This guy's all everything. I mean, he's now a passer. He's, he's, he's a runner. His blocking ability is already documented. A 
89 yards rushing. Calvin Thomas comes in to replace Suey on this play. Payton, and he has stopped at the 10-yard line after a gain of a couple. Bears need to get to the two-yard line for another first down. Scott Studwell, number 55, made the hit in talking with Scott yesterday. It was quite apparent that the Vikings were taking this game seriously. Playoff chances or not, uh, they want a winning season. He said, uh, you know, it's uh, eight and eight's like kissing your sister. Yeah. He didn't think too much of a 500 season. <laughs> you notice how much he talked about Peyton? He said, we got to stop Peyton. we got to stop Peyton. And you see what's happening here. It's Suey that's getting a big yardage on the ground. Yep. Well, there's the gun ending the third quarter of play. And uh, we will have a second and eight for the Bears when we return to the Metrodome. That's the end of the third quarter. We now pause for a word from your local station. Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris, we are beginning the fourth period with the Bears threatening again. Second and eight at the Minnesota 10-yard line. Out of the eye formation, the crowd trying to fire up the Vikings defense. Make the pitch and go to Suey. Suey barrels his way to the five-yard line. Straightened up at that point. Several Vikings are there, but number 72, James Duck White, had the arm wrap on him. Got a pickup of four for Suey. It'll be third and a long three. Close to four yards to go for a first down. They need to get to the two-yard line for a Chicago first down. Through three quarters, the Bears have 253 yards net as opposed to 186 for Minnesota unofficially. They lead by three and are trying to get in again. Suey cuts it back, takes it outside, and he is really hit by Willie Keel, the cornerback. A nice piece of running by Dewey, it appeared, until all of a sudden the cornerback, 195-pound Willie Teal, really put a shoulder into him. Exactly right, because Suey had a uh, head of steam going here. As you look at Jay Salt, he's 81. He's on McNeil. He's trying to just force McNeil wide. Peyton with his block. Suey cuts up there, and it's Willie Teal who really came in with the hit to stop Suey. So the Bears have a decision to make, and it looks like they've already made it. They're not going to settle for the field goal. They're going to go for the first down or the touchdown because uh, apparently they're up three. If they take the field, they'll be up six. And of course, if the Vikings got a touchdown, they they could win this football game. So Ditka's going to go all for the whole bit, I guess. Ditka sent in uh, three tight ends. Presumably one of them was carrying the play, but McMahon has called timeout. He wants to go over and talk it over with Mike Ditka. So we'll be back with the Bears in front. Johnny Morris the Bears have made up their minds they're gone a call discussed by McMahon and Ditka and Ed Hughes at the sideline the Vikings love to stop them here they could turn this game around they trail by only three they need a little more than a yard to get a first down McMahon telling the referee Tom Dooley that he cannot be heard at the line of scrimmage and he will get a grace period here so the Viking crowd with the roof <laughs> reverberating their sounds back down to the field, getting involved in the game directly. Well, there's pretty good uh, echo chamber in this uh, stadium. You can uh, you can hear it. It's it's got to be very loud down there. It's a beautiful stadium, especially when it's snowing in 25 outside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they've had their share of snow here in Minnesota with early season storms. It's an interesting decision by Mike Ditka to go for the touchdown. You can see the ball is just outside the three-yard line. The crowd comes alive again. And the man, the man is obviously very concerned that there would be one miscue here that would cause an offside. Some kind of motion that could mess up their play. Peyton in motion. Pitch out Suey. A block from Peyton. Suey gets to the one-yard line, not to the end zone, but he would appear to have a first down. He got the block from Walter Peyton, and Suey is very close to 100 yards on the day. It is a Chicago first down. Matt Suey got to the one-yard line. 
Calvin Thomas comes in for Suey. Well, he, he turned it up, didn't he? He turned it up the field and put his head down as they ran Peyton in motion that time. And then Peyton turned up and uh, made one of the key blocks. Vikings have all the big guys in across the front. Martin, Johnson, Mullaney, White. First and goal for the Chicago Bears from the one-yard line. Peyton is pulled down from behind as he tried to leap up sideways. Vikings say there's a loose ball. And it was Doug Martin with a very great show of quickness leaping in and grabbing Peyton as he was diving. Martin got him by the leg and hauled him back. Well, the key was there that was Peyton was trying to reach the ball out over the goal line, and somebody kind of batted it loose there. That's a dangerous thing to do when uh, if uh, you haven't been stopped yet, but he was trying to reach over, and somebody batted at the ball. He got about a half yard. They're now a half yard from the goal line on second down. The uh, Bears usually in this situation put Peyton up and over, but in the last few games, it had more of a tendency to quarterback sneak it in when you only have about a foot to go. Let's see if they try and do that with... McMahon. No. Nope. Suey has stopped. That Suey has stopped as the Vikings got excellent penetration. You can see blue jersey Vikings in the backfield. Scott Studwell, number 55, was the man who did the most damage. This will give you a good angle of the two off two lines hitting one another. There wasn't much give as the Vikings did penetrate and Sue just never got a chance to really get going. What a good job by the Vikings defensively on that play. He actually lost about a third of a yard. They're back almost to the one now. Thomas comes in for Suey. Third goal at the one yard line. Vikings were involved in one of these with Detroit last Monday night. In fact, both the Lions and the Vikes found themselves in goal line stands. Third and goal. Watch out for this one. Flag down. Delay of game against the Chicago Bears. The 30-second clock expired. Oh, boy. The second guessers are going to have a field day with this one. I'm sure McMahon is complaining that, hey, the noise. I had to go a little bit slower because I couldn't hear, and that took up some of the time. But the officials aren't buying that, and... Uh, the Bears are penalized back to the six. We'll change personnel and go with a more wide open situation, obviously, to the passing game. Ooh, I think Mike Ditka is about to loosen that tie he has on over there. Third and goal. Now from the six yard line. Slot formation left. Suey in motion. Quick pass oh. for Willie oh. Galt. Nowhere to go. John Turner, number 27, made the initial hit. It was almost like a wide receiver screen as they just threw the quick pass out to Willie Galt, bringing both backs out there to throw the block. And a good block by Dennis McKinnon, but there were too many Vikings all over the place. Good defense as the Bears now will settle for the field goal. Bob Thomas from the 13-yard line, a 23-yard try at an angle from the hash mark. He has it. Well, they got their three, but uh, they got it the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> it took a long time, almost five minutes of the third, fourth quarter. Yeah, the they got it. Minnesota Vikings. And a goal line stand. Surrender the field goal, but not the major score. That's the roof at the Metrodome in Minneapolis, where the Chicago Bears won 17 plays and 68 yards. A 22-yard field goal by Thomas increased their margin back to six points. And they used up 10-03 on the clock. Now the Vikings will get the football. Thomas about to kick it off. Nelson. Nelson to the 25 yard line met head on by Dennis Gentry number 29 next Saturday on CBS and that is Saturday NFL football begins at 12 noon with the New York Giants at Washington could be a big one for the Redskins depending on the outcome 
of their game against Dallas later. And following the football game, NCAA college basketball, the Louisville Cardinals, fresh from a win over number five, Iowa, against the national champion Wolfpack from North Carolina State, 345 Eastern Time. What a fun day of sports on CBS next Saturday. All right, first down for the Minnesota Vikings at the 25-yard line. Steve Dills will try to get him moving. And he's running into traffic. Steve McMichael, he got away from him and still has to take the sack as up came linebacker Gary Campbell into the game for the first time today. As at least that we have been able to call his number out there as Al Harris had gotten the start with Campbell's sore knee. And it'll be a sack for Campbell that results in a two-yard loss. There it is, Cincinnati leading Detroit 17 to 9. So this game becomes even bigger for the Minnesota Vikings because if Detroit loses, and look at this, New Orleans and Philadelphia now 17 17 in the fourth quarter. That's good news for the Chicago Bears. That's right. And there's the other uh, one. There's the bad so news for the Chicago <laughs> Bears. It's 20 to 10, San Francisco over Buffalo. First the good news and then the bad news. <laughs> All right, for the Vikings, however, that Detroit uh, score is the key one for the Vikings because if they win two and Detroit loses two, they can win the division title. Dill intended for Mike Jones incomplete on the coverage, Dave Dewerson. And of course, the Vikings, uh, as we said, they have to win, and uh, they are six points down in this football game, 9.36 remaining in regulation time. And the missed point after by Bob Thomas back in the first half uh, could prove to be key. Something must have happened to Todd Bell. He hasn't been in for a little while since Dewerson came in. Uh, the Bears' strong safety may have hurt himself. I wonder also about Al Harris since uh, Gary Campbell has been in at linebacker. Third down and 12. Out of the shotgun, Dills getting time. Fires it up the middle complete to the rookie Jones and he is short of the first down as he's dropped by Gary Fensick number 45 Mike Jones from Tennessee State. Mm -hmm. There is Jones in almost an identical situation uh, as you can see Dewerson's on the coverage now Jones knows is supposed to know where that first darn marker is he comes back to the ball. And by the time he gets back to it, he has got back beyond that uh, first down marker. So you got to go a little deeper and come back. They're going to go fourth down and about a foot and a half for the Vikings. So if there's been a big play for Minnesota oh, this is today, a big it's one. right here. At the 35-yard line, 8.50 remaining. Hill. They give it to Galbraith, and it appears that he has it. He's met by Singletary. Yes, he does. Spottage of the ball where the official is would indicate a Vikings first down. Well, that's twice Minnesota's done that down and around their own 30 yard line. Both times it's been successful. So the Vikings keep it going here with the clock becoming a factor. They trail by only a converted touchdown. And they have the football at their own 36 yard line. Out to the left goes Leo Lewis. Out to the right, Mike Jones. Galbraith and Darren Nelson, the running back. Remember, Brown left with a pinched nerve injury in his neck. Hills hits the tight end. Brewer, what a good catch. Dave Dewerson tried to strip the ball away from Brewer, and the big tight end hung on for another Viking first down, it would appear. And boy, it was a good thing for Dills that he had a partial rollout. Watch Otis Wilson, number 55, come blitzing through right there, and he would have been right on him there. He got a little bit of a block, but his rollout to the to the right enabled Dills to have time to throw the ball, and uh, Brewer makes the grab and gets himself up there for an apparent first down. It's very, very, very close. Watching the Vikings in practice, almost all of their pass patterns in preparation for the Bears were of the variety that had Dills rolling out mm -hmm. and being as he's not a real big quarterback I think that makes sense he also throws that flat trajectory ball so he can obviously see better uh, when he's uh, moving out away from those big guys coming straight ahead at him we yeah. haven't seen too many drop back passes from him today. Well, from neither quarterback the man is more effective that way also yeah Brewer has got six today Johnny and that one is for another first down He's got 96 yards on the afternoon catching passes. And they had hoped, as we had indicated, to get Dave Casper in, but uh, Brewer certainly been doing the job. 
57,880 fans here at the Minnesota Metrodome. Brings down pass. Dills going deep down the sideline. Good coverage by Frazier. The intended receiver, Terry LeCount, number 80. And Frazier was all over him. Good coverage by number 21, Frazier. And uh, when he gets a one-on-one -on -one situation, he says he doesn't get to look at the quarterback quite as much. That time he has, to, you know, he has to cover the man and go with him. He says he likes the man-for-man -man where he drops off or the zone where he can watch the quarterback's eyes at the same time. But Les Frazier has really come on, leading the Bears with, with uh, six interceptions. One thing we must remember is that the Vikings' offense has been almost nil since the first quarter, early in the first quarter, because their other touchdown was on the uh, blocked punt. Marty McDowell is in for the first time as a receiver, number 88. Somewhat uh, disappointing, number one pick in 1981. Dills intended for McDowell incomplete. Mike Richardson on the tight coverage along the sideline. McDowell was an outstanding college receiver for Mississippi State, considered one of the best in the country when he graduated. This was a game of cat and mouse. I think it was an audible call, and uh, he had gone through the audible because he thought it was going to be a, a blitz by Fensick, and uh, pretty good coverage by Richardson had him man for man. Ball was there nonetheless. Yeah. It was catchable, as they say. Third down, so again, the uh, Vikings here in a, another a big play situation. They made a fourth and a half yard. Now they need a third and ten from their own 46 to keep the drive going. 7-18 on the clock. They're down by six. Nelson in motion. Hills forced out. The pass on the great. Loose ball. Marty McDowell made the catch and then dropped the football, and it may be a Bears ball. Let's wait and see. The Chicago Bears say they have it. McDowell made a good catch over there, but then fumbled the ball on the hit. And look at this pile up. There are striped shirts in there trying to sort out who's got it. And whoever has it better hang on to it because you can steal that ball underneath the pileup. And if you've got it when everybody unpiles, it's your ball. It is Chicago ball. Gary Fensick returning to his starting safety role comes up with a loose ball. There's a disappointed Marty McDowell, number 88, who made a good catch and had the first down yardage. And here's the play, and you can see that. Uh, Number 21, Frazier went for the interception as McDowell made the grab, cut back to the inside, looked like he was off for a while, and here comes the ball stripped loose by Potter, and it was Gary Fensick who gets the ball right down, and it looked like the Vikings had it. See, they reach in there and grab that. I'll never forget one time. Well, I'll tell you this story later on. Hey, I want to hear it now. Oh, you can't <laughs> tell me now because we have to go away for a minute or two. But the Bears lead 19 to 13, and they have the football when we return. First in Minneapolis where Gary Fensick has recovered the fumble by Marty McDowell. Bears football. They lead by six. Payton gets loose down the sideline. Has a first down in Vikings territory at the 49. Scott Studwell, the linebacker, forced him out of bounds over there. And a tough, tough break for the Minnesota Vikings who had to make two big plays to keep their drive going. They had the third and ten first down conversion on the pass to McDowell. And McDowell had the ball stripped away. New Orleans and Philadelphia have gone to overtime. And that would be, uh, say they tied, that's good news for the Bears. <laughs> that's hard to keep track of all this. It certainly is. Peyton has now picked up 67 yards on 15 carries today. They spotted the ball at the Bears 49. After this carry, this is Suey. Suey gets into the Viking zone to the 48. Gain of about three yards. And he is buried there by Fred McNeil and Charlie Johnson, 54 and 65, respectively. It'll be second down and eight for the Bears. And they would like, of course, to keep the ball on the ground and use up the clock as they are protecting a six point margin with 6.29 remaining in the fourth quarter. Big turnover by McDowell. Critical play in the Vikings' fortunes. McMahon running out of time. He is sacked by Randy Holloway, number 75. A loss of four yards on the play. So the Vikings' defense 
realizing there's still plenty of time on the clock to get one score trying to get the ball back for the offense McMahon couldn't find anybody down the field and then was ready to take off and you'll see Holloway he comes uh, up high and then just puts the old clamps on McMahon before he can get rid of the ball a big sack when the Vikings needed one third and 12 at Suey by the way with his last carry Exactly at the century mark. 16 carries for 100 yards for Matt Suey. Keith Van Horn is in at right tackle now for the Bears. Van Horn and Frederick, the reach had time today. Here's the screen pass. A flag is down. The screen to Suey. Suey oh. trying to get first down yardage, and he got the yardage, but uh, the flag could well be against Chicago. Great good. effort by Suey. Yes, good running by Matt Suey, but. The flag is thrown in the area of where it's usually uh, offensive holding. Mullaney and Turner made the tackle downfield at the Vikings 38 yard line and that may be for not illegal motion is the signal against the Chicago Bears. So a big play by Suey and company is called back. Kenny Marjoram Mike Ditka sent the play in with Kenny Marjoram and that was a, a big 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 penalty against Chicago. Number 78, 79, offense, third down. 78-79. Uh, the, <laughs> the right side of the line dropped back a little bit uh, too quickly. Van Horn and Becker, respectively. That's uh, the sixth penalty against the Bears. The Vikings have had four. Almost equal amounts of yardage. 72 for the Bears, 70 for the Vikings. Out of the shotgun inside handoff to Peyton and the Vikings were expecting it but he gets loose and however he is going to be well short of first down yardage and it was Doug Martin who surged in there and had a shot at Peyton behind the line of scrimmage well Walter lost his cap on that one it's he's lucky he didn't lose more than that there were Minnesota Vikings all over him he said get me my helmet in a hurry Brings up fourth down, so the Vikings defense continues to excel. And gives their offense another opportunity with 4.55 and counting. Remember, they trail by only six. The new Bear punter, Ray Stakowitz, who has been not talking to the USFL this week. And he's still got his jersey on. The Chicago Bears standing at the 32 yard line. Long count. Oh, and here they come. They blocked it again. Two blocks by the Vikings. Steve Jordan has the ball. And it may have been Jordan who blocked the punt. It was either Jordan or Rick Bell, number 33. Johnny, how do you get a breakdown like that twice in a game? Right up the middle. Let's check his depth. He's 12 yards back. Uh, I'll tell you what. Uh, Bell got through. Nobody even blocked him. There was a mistake in the fair uh, lineup right off to the right of the center. And there was the block. And it's going to be the Vikings ball. But that's twice they have fooled the Bears. Stakowicz, one, two. Oh, boy. He had no chance to get that one off, did he? Well, I tell you, Ray Stakowicz has got to be wondering about coming back and playing yeah. the old ball. <laughs> First down for Minnesota. Put me on injured reserve. <laughs> 4.28 to go. Vikings in great position now. Hills up the middle for what a catch by Nelson. Is it incomplete? Yes. Nelson took a real wrap. He had the ball, but not long enough for possession. And had he had it been ruled a completion, it looked like the Bears came up with the football on a fumble. So it turned out better to be an incompletion for the Vikings. What a great effort by Nelson. And Dills, who put the ball on the money pretty well. The ball actually went into Gary Fentick's hands, but he couldn't quite hang on to it. And then it dropped to the turf as the Vikings go immediately to the air. Here is the pass. It goes back against the green. Now watch the ball as Nelson gets hit. And there was Fentick. Could have had an interception, but couldn't quite hang on to the ball. Second and ten, Vikings. In Bears territory at the 33. Dills rolling again. Buying a lot of time now trying to find an open man and throws it out of bounds right to Leslie Frazier. Dills knew he had nobody open. He just threw it up the sideline. There's a penalty flag down and it, they're pointing at the uh, Vikings bench area and I'm not sure what uh, this one's going to be. The 
it's a signal against the Minnesota Vikings. Is that a personal foul signal? I'm not no. sure. We'll have to wait and see. It may have been a an ineligible pass receiver downfield on the play. Wait and see that signal again from from Dooley. Actually, his best decision would have been to run right up the sidelines. He had time to run up there and uh, just uh, did not do it. Looked to me like they had only a couple of receivers in the pattern, and uh, they were covered. They might have thrown that against, uh, called that against him for for in intentionally throwing the ball away, <laughs> or getting down field. Illegal man downfield. Oh, illegal illegal man downfield. Offense. It's second down. Yeah, it was. Uh, Tim Irwin was illegally downfield, and uh, they had a penalty. As I recollect from Monday night, a similar penalty an offensive lineman downfield last week. That will not make uh, Mr. Grant yeah. happy at all. Well, he assumed it was going to be a run right. here. Actually, he should have run the ball, but uh, he you just waited. Saw, that's right. You saw Irwin look back and saw his quarterback probably thinking run. So that can happen. Second and 20 out of the shotgun. Uh-oh. A blitz and single carry on Dills, who just was able to get the ball. Dills dropped the football and was lucky that he got enough of a bounce to cover it before Singletary covered it. Boy, Dill saw that one coming as number 50 Singletary came right up the middle slick and clean as Dennis Willie blocked Osborne out of there. And here comes number 50. Then he drops the ball, does recover it, and this is a drive in reverse. Boy, what uh, what a, an untimely set of circumstances for the Vikings who came up with a big play on the block punt and were right there at the 33 of Chicago to uh, make something happen for a go-ahead score. And instead, they're third and 31. And they are back now in their own territory. Hill's going deep for Jones and McDowell. Everybody oh. And he's caught by Mike Jones. Mike Jones, the rookie from Tennessee State. First down at the six-yard line of Chicago. Johnny, that turned into one of those big Ben Hill Marys. And he had fingers like glue on that one because the Bears were there. Terry Schmidt is right there. A whole bunch of white jerseys. And uh, Jones goes up and just out leaps everybody and just hangs on to it just like he had a whole bunch of stick -em on his hands. A super play by Jones as the Vikings have a first down on the six. Do you think that they were running that kind of a pattern with everybody there as you would in that final second situation? I Looked like it. Yes, it was. They were all there. First down. Darren Nelson. Pulled down from behind. And there'll be a loss on the play. Mike Singletary just bulldogged him out of bounds. And what speed by a linebacker to get penetration into the backfield and get all the way over to the sidelines to make that tackle. It shows Singletary's quickness. He is fast becoming one of the finest middle linebackers in the, in the league as uh, Mike Ditka looks on. He knows he's got some problems here. Loss of a yard on the play back to the seven. Second and goal from the seven yard line. Imagine Minnesota not getting something out of this after all of the things that have happened on this series. 228, the clock, a big factor now. Ricky Young got to about the five with forward progress for a pickup of a couple. Bensick was there, Wilson was there. Gary Campbell, number 59, made the primary contact. So it is third and goal from the five-yard line. What a strange turn of events here. And they're going to let it go down to the two-minute warning. The Vikings backed up in one direction with a couple of strange things happening, and then they throw what uh, looked very much like a Big Ben to get right down there again. So we're at the two-minute warning in regulation time. The score, the Chicago Bears 19, Minnesota back just 6 and 13. Tim Ryan with Johnny Morris, and the Bears and Vikings headed to a thrilling finish here. Two minutes remaining. Third and goal from the five-yard line. Both teams must have the win today and again next week. Galbraith. Picks up about two. Gary Campbell make the tackle, and it brings up fourth down. Make it uh, that Ted Brown was Ted Brown. Ted Brown, the ball carrier, who had his shoulder pads off earlier in this game with a pinched nerve in his neck. 
and put him back on again and carry the ball. He got only a yard. They spot it at the four. The Vikings seem to be a little bit, uh, the clock is still running at 132. They seem to be a little confused as to what they're going to do. So Dills finally calls a timeout, but they lost about 15 seconds in the process. Now I would imagine they're going to go, uh, you know, fourth down, go for the touchdown. They could take a field goal, but they'd still be down by three and they would be just pushing for overtime. So they're going to go for it. This is an interesting circumstance. We'll be back. Donnie Morris with Tim Ryan at the Metrodome in Minneapolis, and this is fourth and goal from the four yard line. The Bears have been eliminated from the playoffs by the New Orleans Saints, who beat Philadelphia in overtime 20 to 17. So the Vikings are the key team, and the key play is right here, and it is blocked. It was Mike Singletary crashing in on top of Steve Dills, and there is a happy young linebacker who's going to keep that football. Mike Singletary just blocked that pass and stopped the Vikings at the four-yard line on fourth down. Excellent defense by the Chicago Bears. The Vikings were down there. They had four shots at it. He chose to run a couple of times. Here's number 50 right over the middle. He's off a couple of yards. And then he takes off. Now that's good quickness and he gets through slick and clean as the Vikings have had problems adjusting their pass blocking to pick up those blitzers up the middle. The Bears fooled him on that. And here is another ground level look at it as Singletary got back so got through so quickly that Dills never had a chance. Well the Bears wild card chances dissipated just as they made that big defensive play with the win by New Orleans over Philadelphia in overtime 20 to 17. So their playoff hopes slender as they were are gone. Minnesota is now facing the same situation. The Bears have the football. Matt Suey picks up about a yard on first down. 119 on the clock. Of course, a Chicago victory will eliminate the Minnesota Vikings. Tonight on CBS, a regular lineup starting with 60 minutes and then a special, the all-star party for Frank Sinatra with a host of celebrities on hand. And that'll be followed by the Jeffersons, Goodnight Beantown, and Trapper John M.D. An exciting evening of entertainment programming on CBS. You know, where the Vikings really goofed up is, of course, they chose to run on third down, which keeps the clock going, but they didn't have a plan for the fourth down play if they didn't make it. They were forced to call a timeout, so now they only had two left, whereas if they had run their third down, then into their fourth down play, they would have three timeouts now and could stop the, bear, the clock three times and get the ball back with maybe a you know 40 or 50 seconds but the fact that they're down to one timeout now means that the Bears are going to have one play where they can run 30 seconds off that clock and uh, uh, just a, a little bit of a misorganization down on the sidelines it didn't happen to Bud Grant's team too often but oh, it, it happened sure this one yeah whether it happened on the on, on the field or, or not we won't know of course until the postmortems but uh, the Chicago victory if they hang on to gain it will finish the playoff hopes for the Minnesota Vikings uh, such as they were as we commented neither coach talked about playoffs at all they they really had pretty much conceded that that was not in their picture but uh, they both wanted the victory badly remember the Bears have not won here since 1971 Green Bay wants to finish with a winning season and straight ahead Walter Payton gets out to about the eight yard line a pickup of five they bring up third down and five or six to go. Uh, make that Calvin Thomas the ball carrier not Peyton on that play and New Orleans the final score in overtime a field goal breaking up a 17 17 tie over the Eagles and Eagles have played some tough football the last two or three weeks and lost some tough games been a long year for the Eagles. So New Orleans having defeated Philadelphia means that the Chicago Bears have been eliminated from wild card competition which may have fallen their way with a whole slew of circumstances falling in their favor one of which was a New Orleans loss. As far as the division is concerned uh, both of these teams are going to be out of it unless the Vikings uh, pull something off here because they need to have a victory so both teams out the window I don't think the Vikings have any kind of a chance with the loss here not with a loss no they had to win. And they are 110 away from defeat with this time out on the field and third down. And at one time this team was six and two. Six and two. I realize they had a whole bunch of injuries but their schedule wasn't all that tough and uh, I'm sure Bud Grant has to be very disappointed in the way this season is um, winding down. 
New Orleans Saints moved to eight and seven with their victory and so they keep their wild card hopes alive. Next Sunday the NFL today will be followed by Green Bay at Chicago. Many of you will be seeing that game and of course the Packers are still alive and they play Monday night against Tampa Bay and then some of you will be seeing that Tampa Bay Detroit game next Sunday. Here's Peyton and he has the first down and down the sideline he lost his balance gets over the 30 yard line a big gain by Peyton and nearly went the distance and Walter Peyton a little slow to get up here. He broke a couple of tackles in his own inimitable fashion and then wound up tripping up himself. John Turner made sure he got no farther but he has moved it out to the 30 yard line. We are under a minute from a Bears victory which would give them on the season a seven and eight mark with one to go and a chance to finish at 500. Minnesota would fall to seven and eight. Walter Payton now is getting close to the 100 yard mark himself 17 carries for 94 yards he got 22 yards on that one and he could see that end zone down there he thought he had a touchdown he was it was wide open tripped over the 30 yard line I think next Sunday again just a reminder that uh, some of you will be seeing Green Bay at Chicago starting at 1230 Eastern Time the NFL today and of course the Packers uh, that could still be a big game for Green Bay next week because they still have a shot at winning the Central Division title. Tampa Bay will be at Detroit. Some of you will see that game and of course the Lions losing today at the moment. They haven't lost the game. They are losing today at Cincinnati. Uh, that could be a huge game for them. So and in between don't forget Green Bay plays Tampa Bay on Monday night to affect both those uh, games next Sunday. That's right. If Green Bay wins then if they beat Chicago and Detroit loses to Tampa Bay they would win the title. They would have to hope for an awful lot for Detroit to lose at home against the Buccaneers. Chicago first down with 59 seconds and here's where they use up a bunch of it on the clock as McMahon just covers the ball. And the Minnesota Vikings who in that strange strange series coming down to the two minute mark where they had uh, made the big play on the, the pass down the sidelines to Mike Jones after they had kept the thing going. Uh, then all of a sudden uh, they wind up coming up empty when they get inside the four yard line. They went forwards backwards and got down there and came up with zero. Second down from the 30 yard line with 22 seconds and counting and this will probably do it. Matt Suey's going to go out with 101 yards on the day. He and uh, Walter Payton each carrying 17 times today. And with nine seconds in ticking the teams head for the sidelines and the Bears climb to seven and eight Minnesota falls to seven and eight and an unhappy Bud Grant sees the Vikings lose to the Bears for the first time here in Minneapolis since 1971. So saying so long from the Metrodome I'm Tim Ryan for Johnny Morris where our final score the Chicago Bears. 19 the Minnesota Vikings 13 coming up next the Washington Redskins against the Dallas Cowboys except those of you viewers in the Minneapolis St. Paul area.